So hello everybody. Hopefully you can hear and see us not only here but also at your screens, on your work workplaces or on or your homes. My name is Kristaps. And my name is Yanis. So I represent uh, all the Spielands Bureau and I'm a design development manager. Uh, meanwhile, I'm a project manager of uh, UPB's IT branch company called Alto 4.0. So before we start our presentation, I would like to introduce uh, UPB Corporation, which has more than 1,800 employees, operates in more than 20 countries with a main export market in Scandinavia. And what's the most important, we have 150 engineers in-house and more than 50 engineers in subcontracting. So it means that this story will be about them. How do they collaborate with the software developers? How do they get back to engineering? We start with a change of mindset. Now, those who knows, we have a strict rules regarding structural design. It means that every connection, every element, every joint in CAS detail has to be calculated and designed. And the report has to, create, has to be created. Um, it, uh, to do this, it requires a lot of time and a lot of effort. So we came with a system that we do not design one element or two elements or element groups. We design the whole model at once. For those not familiar with a structural design or the design process, there's a simple workflow. You can see that at first there's a beam model, which is a low definition beam model. Then there's a finite element model where all physical data is inside this. Then we calculate elements and connections. Then structural engineer prepares design tasks for um, modelers. And afterwards, modeler creates fabrication model. And this process requires a lot of data transfer, about which will continue Yanis. So, um, this data transfer between these stages, uh, they can be transferred through different medias, through paper, CAD, Excel, BIM models, uh, any, anything you can imagine. But all of these transfers are usually bottlenecks because they are done by hand. Engineers are struggling uh, how to do it automatically and instead they are taking data from one medium, uh, from one software and inserting this data in different medium, in different software, doing it by hand. Instead, we need to start working with data. We, uh, we need to make this information transfer automatic, since you, you only thing you need to do is take data from one software and insert it into another. We need to spend more time engineering instead of this manual labor. Information should be created only once, in one software, and afterwards automatically transferred to the other softwares. But in order to do this, achieve this, we need this change of mindsets, what methods we are uh, with uh, what methods we are working with this data, uh, that we need to work with the whole model instead of separate elements. Over time, it has changed how most companies uh, also ask how we are managing uh, this data, uh, this uh, information transfer. For example, let's look at uh, steel column cross sections from structural engineer to the detailer. At the very start, it was uh, on paper, uh, building plans and uh, with a pen, you draw on plans, what kind of cross-sections are necessary. Afterwards, it was enrichment of CAD plans in uh, working in DVG. Then uh, also came Excel, VBA, where we are using default application export-import functions and uh, doing design in Excel. Then uh, using Grasshopper, it's already a possibility of starting to link these processes together, while uh, last step programming, it's fully uh, possible to automatize this whole process. And uh, these different methods can be simplified, where first of all, it's a direct manipulation method, where, uh, for example, there are calculations by hand on paper, drawing something in softwares by hand, for example, polybeams, and they can be simplified that there is no setup time, you just start doing it, but the problem is that with time, you can't get more efficient with this. There's very little efficiency uh, achieved with this. Next method would be called parametri uh, parametric manipulation, where it, uh, for example, Excel spreadsheets. It takes a little bit more. Uh, it takes okay. It takes more time to set up, but instead, over time, you get more and more efficiency. That you don't have to redo this whole algorithm. Uh, the problem is that you are only capable of working according to your previously designed algorithm, but it's possible to quickly adjust it if it's necessary. 
And then the last method is uh, programming, coding uh, custom application functionality, where, um, for example, converting Tecla model to structural model. It uh, uh, takes way more time to set it up, especially if you want to have your own custom converter. And uh, also, it's uh, not possible to adapt. If, you, if something unique happens, you can't quickly adapt this process to your unique requirements, as uh, well as only a limited amount of people are even capable of uh, Improve, improving this process. Uh, as an example, I would want to show you uh, how this information transfer happens. We have a BIM model, some uh, thousand wall panels, and we have from structural model information about necessary reinforcement meshes. What kind of, for each wall panel, what kind of mesh, rebar size, rebar step is necessary. We have it exported to an Excel table, and uh, um, there's a large amount of information. We can use simple Grasper script to read this information and transfer this information automatically to the Tecla model for, all, for the whole model at once. And, uh, and afterwards, all of the cutouts, openings are taken into account. As an example, I have included in the bottom right corner QR code or simple link that you can uh, open YouTube video, how this system, this Grasper script, is created from scratch in 17 minutes. It's uh, faster than this whole presentation to set up this particular information transfer. Okay. And, uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. For the company to master uh, these methods, uh, there are required skill sets uh, to understand how the BIM software works, how the FAM software works, the input and output data. You want, need to understand the Excel and the Visual Basic because Visual Basic allows to enrich Excel, function, Excel functionality. Uh, visual programming and programming, this is the step where you truly master the software. But I cannot stress enough how important it is to understand structural design. Because when you are working with data sets with a lot of inf information, so you cannot, uh, you need to understand all anomalies. So this is the most Im important uh, knowledge and skill to have. How to choose the right approach? Uh, if you have simple tasks, do not automate them. Uh, make them manually. If you have frequent repeating tasks, try about parametrics and uh, visual programming. And only if you have truly understandable workflow, you want every engineer without um, software programming skills to understand it, then you go for software development. Uh, so, now we will show some case studies uh, how the software developers and engineers are working together. As our previous uh, presenters showed, there are a lot of software. And here you can see also in the middle there's a finite element model, which can be made in several softwares. There's a, a element design, again different softwares, a connection and join design, again different softwares. And this is all, at least we are trying to uh, connect this all to the BIM model, which is later used for various purposes. Uh, we, we are developing the model matcher. So this is the software uh, which allows to connect BIM and the FEM models directly. You can do this, uh, for example, by using guide numbers in a BIM software and uh, um, element numbers in PEM software, uh, you can, but there are limitations. For example, if you have three walls in a, a BIM software on, and only one wall in a uh, PEM software, how you would connect these elements. Uh, then you can ask engineers to write the comments or um, user-defined attributes, but who would pay engineers to write thousands of, uh, thousands of data by hand. So, so we are trying to escape from it. And that's why I created the matcher. So it, it does it all. It uh, combines guide numbers with the uh, element numbers. It uh, creates uh, comments and the user-defined attributes. Uh, it finds the model gravity, element gravity centers and the bounding boxes. So, but the idea is only one idea. So the structural engineer would know what are the changes in a BIM model? Now I will show just simple uh, workflow in a steel design. So uh, 
again, at first we have a rough beam model, beam model which is uh, later, which, which is prepared for FEM software. Then we have preliminary FEM model, which is a physical representation of the building. It has all the loading and internal forces. And we prepare all this information for exporting. And we like, like everybody, we don't export one element or calculate one element. Here you can see the whole floor, which is exporting, or even it's the whole building. So this is the results we get. This is the preliminary uh, uh, steel element design spreadsheet where you have like, which does two things. The first thing, it has built-in optimization. If you have requirements for, from client regarding to width or depth of the elements, you put these values, values inside. And the second reason we use this is because this is much faster than with the FEM software due to limitations in uh, service liability state. Then we again import this old data to, to have the final model. This is the final model with the uh, final stiffnesses. And again, we get the, this is the final report uh, regarding element design with all values of, of each element, each utilization ratios. So it's not a mess data, this is a structured data. And last but not least, all this information is imported into BIM model. So we, don't, we do not prepare tasks for modelers. We do not draw anything on CAD or on paper. So this is directly imported from FEM model. And if you need some adjustments, structural engineer can do it uh, slightly also here with the software. Uh, and, uh, but, but it's not the case. He should like he shouldn't be do this. So uh, one of the very first things the enge structural engineers done uh, did after learning Grasshopper was uh, creating detailing tasks uh, directly inside BIM model. They have reports from the structural model about what kind of precast seams are necessary, what kind of embeds are necessary, and they were inserting this information in BIM model, skipping uh, DVG or other plans. And it also becomes easier for the detailer, where he doesn't have to look in three different softwares about how, uh, where, how many, what kind of type of details are necessary to insert in the BIM model. And this is a very easy uh, process. Since you have all of the coordinates, you simply create data from scratch. Uh, however, if you want automatic detailing, that is a whole uh, different beast. Since you have to join together two different data sets, you have your uh, design task and you have your BIM model and you have to somehow match them together. We have solved this with connection classifier where we find pairings of elements and analyze what kind of connections there are between each particular two elements. Uh, you can have your horizontal connections, vertical connections, uh, corbel connections, uh, beam to wall connections and so on. And if I know what kind of connection is uh, in model, and I know from detailing task what needs to be done in this particular uh, place, what kind of embeds are necessary, how many of these embeds, I can match this information easily together and uh, take from uh, library a specific custom component that's capable of achieving this task. And connection classifier helps me find the particular components that are required in each, each of these places. Here, for example, I have, uh, uh, it's automatically places all of the straight uh, connections, PVL loops, with the correct uh, sizes and the correct steps. And here you can see mm. the connection. And uh, this completely skips uh, the human error. The, the information is automatically transferred from the structural model. Next thing, uh, BIM models are becoming more and more complex. They are containing uh, it's, uh, millions of attributes. And uh, some of the attributes are very specific. Engineer needs to insert them. But most of the attributes are something that uh, this project just requires to have these attributes. And we developed a tool how we can easily check all of these millions of attributes. Are they uh, correct according to, the, uh, to what the project requires? Uh, the tool is called Model Checker. Uh, it works headlessly without even opening the model. And it's possible to check, uh, does your concrete uh, elements have concrete grades? Do you have... Uh, rebar radi radiuses and sizes according to what your bending cutting machines in the factory can make. Uh, are the sizes and weights uh, according to the, what the factory uh, limits are? Um, 
there are like imagination is the limit what is possible to check with this tool. Then the result is that uh, one person is capable of uh, checking all of the models uh, within UPB company, which we are de developing in BIM. And um, she is finding lots of, lots of mistakes. And all of these mistakes are afterwards generated as uh, BCF files and uh, automatically uh, exported to Trimble Connect uh, to the relevant project. So uh, I hope you enjoyed some of these of our case studies. Uh, next, uh, we would like to summarize some of our findings and results that we, uh, from this presentation. So uh, first of all, to start to automatize these processes, we need to change. We need to start using these new methods, these uh, parametrics or appli uh, custom applications. And uh, most important step is that both management and engineers need a desire for this change. Uh, for engineers, they need a desire to actually learn this way of working. And for man management, it's basically uh, giving time to engineers to learn it. Uh, next, if there's this desire and is, if there's this time, in my opinion, technologies have currently reached maturity for very easy use. Uh, uh, technologies themselves, also communities around these uh, technologies like uh, Grasshopper, Dynamo, uh, programming languages, it's very uh, comparatively easy. If you are already an engineer, it's, it should be easy to uh, pick up these things. Uh, you could simplify. If you don't know visual programming or you don't know coding, it's basically you are forced to work in a style that the computer wants you to work. You can only execute functions that are already in the software. If you pick up a visual programming language like Grasper or Dynamo, it's basically you have learned uh, to communicate with the computer in a sign language. You can already tell him some simple things to execute. If you pick up a coding, you can start speaking with a computer, with applications as a, uh, as a person to person, so that the computer works for you. It executes functions that you want him to execute. Uh, next, of course, not all of the per persons can learn these things, uh, as we've shown in the previous uh, table, which Christoph very quickly skipped over. Uh, we would say that uh, uh, roughly 1% of engineers have this desire to learn these things, learn parametric programming, uh, learn coding. Uh, but we have, uh, uh, we have tested, we have tried out that uh, if we uh, force the engineers enough, we give them trainings, uh, we can raise this uh, to roughly 15% out of engineers are capable of uh, doing this process. So that you just have to motivate them. And, uh, but the coding itself, only roughly 1% of engineers are capable of picking up uh, coding, since it's, it's very rarely used in your day-to-day -day job. Uh, but uh, you can instead uh, go to the software companies, which can replicate this coding functionality. But then the result is anyway, you should represent all of the skills within a team so that um, there are persons who are very good at direct manipulations, but you have at least one person who's capable of these parametric workflows in your team, and he sees uh, where you can automatize your tasks and quickly automatize them. And uh, the, in previous presentations, there were talks about these uh, black boxes, that uh, the process becomes uh, untrustworthy, that nobody trusts, nobody sees what's happening. That's why we, uh, we would, uh, we also, um, solve the same things that uh, when developing a, a complex application, nobody was trusting it, it was very hard to afterwards check it. Instead, you should uh, isolate specific functions and automate these functions. And afterwards, if you are sure that each of the functions works very good, then you can start thinking of linking these functions together. And uh, before that, evaluate what you need to automatize. There could be some simple tasks that you can automatize, but it's not worth it to automatize if you are only spending like one or two days per year on doing it. There could be more important things. And always have a precise vision of what you want to do. Uh, before going to the software company to create a custom application, you need to have an exact vision of what you want to do. Uh, if necessary, do it before that with hand. Um, do all of the process so that you know what exact functions are necessary. Because if you simply imagine that you want to do something and just uh, simply tell it as a sentence of software company, there will most likely be communication errors. OK, so this is the slide most company executives were waiting for. Uh, I cannot tell you how much euros, dollars we have spent on development, but what I can show that's 13,000 hours a year uh, or 19 hours per engineer. And uh, it is a hefty price tag. But what it gets back is also worthly. We reduce the element design by 60% and task preparation by 50. 
But what's more important, what it gives to engineers, engineers are getting back to engineering, not data manipulation from one software to other software. And I believe that's uh, most important, and the time has come that uh, software companies were dealing with so structural engineer for the last two decades, and now we can show what structural engineers can do and learn in software development. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys. I don't think we have online questions, but uh, we have a few. Um, um, there is such thing as uh, siloed beam or lonely beam. Uh, do you consider yourselves as being in such a state uh, in terms of communication with uh, either your subcontractors or the lead designer? Because uh, the design process uh, and the construction process is a collaborative process. <laughs> okay, I mean... So you are too advanced. Um, I would say not, because it uh, depends on, on what, which company you're, you're looking at, because UPB is a corporation, we have separate companies, and even in a company we have different understanding of BIM and different development levels of, of BIM. Um, yes, and uh, if you are talking about export, uh, then we are like uh, the last part of the food of ch chain of the food, so we're the, the last last element. So we we produce the data what our Scandinavian partners want. Yes, we can do much more, but we we produce the data what our Scandinavian partners want. Okay, thank you. And uh, in regard of uh, future development, uh, what's your vision? Where are you going next? That's Peter <laughs> It's basically raising the bar how many engineers are capable of working with this parametric process. It's, uh, uh, I'm basically, I'm doing it, and uh, I designed one, of the, one training course. All of the engineers went through it. I saw that 10% were are now working. Now I'm, figuring, I'm trying to figure out some different training course, and uh, so that all of the other engineers who didn't stick to the wall yet, so that they go through this uh, second course, and hopefully more engineers will start working like it. If I may add, so the, like the vision is that engineers truly spend time engineering, not the data transfer from uh, one software I will not name to the other software. So the main idea is so that engineers spend more time engineering, the same as construction specials spend time on what they're doing on site. So this is the idea, not to work for the software, but soft, make at, last, at least software work for us. So that's the aim we are most engineers are capable of uh, copying Excel tables from one Excel to a different Excel. But the same process is possible also when looking at DVG files, at um, BIM software, you can, from uh, structural models, you can read all of this data and manipulate it. Thank you. Yes.